Tonight we report on an upcoming meeting to discuss the future of the Grant County Fairgrounds and Moses Lake will soon have a new fast food restaurant. What's happening in sports, Bob? Thanks, Alan. Moses Lake basketball positions for a postseason run and the Warden boys drop a first round district game to Lake Roosevelt. Let's take a glance at our weather center forecast. And as we slide through our Friday, looking pretty good for the most part, but a little shower threat will be coming our way overnight to start the weekend. But things are looking very, very nice. The tail's coming on up. I'm Alan Troop, and we have all this and much more on i Fiber one News. From the i Fiber one HD studio here in the heart of the Columbia Basin, this is i Fiber one News. Your number one source for local news, sports headlines, and our very own Weather Center forecast covering the entire Columbia Basin. This is iFiber One News, and it starts now. The Grant County Commissioners and Moses Lake City Council members are sitting down to talk about the fairgrounds next week. A meeting is scheduled to start at 10 a.m. on February 18th at the Moses Lake City Council Chambers, located at 401 South Balsam Street. The Grant County Commissioners are facing a March 2nd deadline to decide what they want to do about the septic systems at the fairgrounds. State Department of Health officials set the deadline after reporting the septic systems at the fairgrounds are overworked and affecting the groundwater. A study suggested two options, either the fairgrounds should be connected to the city sewer system or build a lagoon below the rodeo arena. The county commissioners previously raised concerns about connecting to the city's sewer system because city policy would require the property to be annexed. Efreda's Lee Theater is now under new ownership. The business was recently sold back to a previous owner. Reporter Jeff Chu has the details. Randy Fairchild is returning to Afreda as the owner of the Lee Theater. Fairchild, whose brother Jeff owns Fairchild Cinemas in Moses Lake and other movie theaters in the Tri-Cities, bought back the Lee Theater from the Whetstone family. Randy Fairchild owned the Lee Theater from 2000 to 2006 and then sold it to the Whetstone family, who are selling it back to him. He explained why. It's something you have to work at and devote time to and they they have a large family and Steve has another uh, job and it was just getting to be I think too much for them to uh, to continue on with so they were wanted to uh, divest and so we decided to come back. Fairchild left Afreda in 2006 to help his brother build a movie theater in Pasco. He then returned to Moses Lake to manage Fairchild Cinemas which his brother had built some 15 years ago. Fairchild said there is one major improvement this year he will make to the Afreda Theater. We're going to be putting in some new seats in the auditoriums, uh, some nice seats. Uh, I think people will really like them. And I hope to happen here, at least in a couple of the auditoriums, very quickly. The other one may take a little bit longer. There are 300 seats in the main theater and 90 seats in the upstairs theaters. Fairchild said he and his wife will move from Moses Lake to Afreda to run the Lee Theater. He says some of the Whetstones will remain as employees. The Real Pizza restaurant inside the theater, which Fairchild started up in the 1990s, will remain open. I'm Jeff Chu for iFiber One News. A Carl's Jr. fast food restaurant is coming to Moses Lake. A building permit application has been submitted to remodel the former Denny's restaurant which later became Wise Guys Restaurant at 1765 Kittleson Road near Interstate 90. According to Moses Lake City records, the plan shows a 4,830 square foot restaurant. The restaurant is projected to open in May. Sweethearts of the Rodeo is holding a fundraising dinner and dance on Saturday to help raise funds for the Rodeo Queen University. According to organizers, the school trains rodeo queens and is a faith-based leadership training organization educating girls and women about life lessons to build their faith, character, and self-esteem. Their fundraiser begins at 6 p.m. at the White Trail Grange at 3392 Road 5 Northwest, south of Ephrata. 
Tickets are $20 per person and $40 per family. The event includes dinner, dancing, door prizes, and an auction. And now we take a look at people being sought by law enforcement. This is Sheriff Tom Jones with the Grand County Sheriff's Office. Each of the people you see here have a warrant for their arrest. If you see any of these people, we ask you to not attempt to detain or apprehend them, but call us at 509-762-1160 or send us an email at primetips at co.grant.wa.us. If the person is presenting a danger, call 911. With your help, we can bring these people to justice and make our community safer. Short break. We'll be right back. At Moses Lake Community Health Center, we have had the privilege to serve the local community since 1978. What I like about working at this clinic more than any other clinic that I've worked at is the patient care. With the patient care team that we've assembled, it allows us to take care of these many facets of the patient and their family's needs. Please take the opportunity to experience the high quality care provided at our clinics. Just when I thought the blizzard couldn't get any better, DQ put the blizzard inside a waffle cone. This is mind blowing. So when DQ asked me how I would tell the world, I said. <laughs> Sounds better in Italian. Pretty impressive, Liz. Any blizzard, like confetti cake, now in a fresh baked waffle cone. This is fan food, not fast food. Well, hi there, everybody. Meteorologist Don Morelli with you here on iFiber Channel 1 News Weather. Your forecast, of course, brought to you by Bud Cleary Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. Well, the thermometer remains in the above normal category, and that'll be the menu not only right through the weekend, but even into early to midweek next week at least, even though a cold front's coming through during the weekend. And with the cool front, maybe a few sprinkles to start the day Saturday, overnight Friday, Saturday. But other than that, no really big chance of any precipitation here in the Columbia Basin. A slight chill to start the week as a secondary cold front comes through Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening. So Monday, Tuesday, a little cooler. And as has been the case off and on the past month or two, when we get in this sort of pattern, we see a little bit of low clouds and fog during the morning hours. That might come back our way by midweek next week. In the meantime, 55 and 43, the extremes today, the morning low above what the normal daytime high should be. Back in 1977, we set a record of 64 degrees. And just a few years ago, we set a record in Moses Lake, just near 60, around 59. Once again, the morning low, just where the daytime high should be. So no complaints with the temperatures. I hope there's no complaints. In fact, what a bright evening we're settling into. 52 degrees, a little bit of clouds, especially over the mountains and to our north. 43 degree dew point, a light west-southwest breeze that'll be shifting to the west-northwest overnight. In fact, we're watching a cold front during the day on Friday that'll continue to push into the west coast and looking into the Cascades overnight and into our area. Briefly, in the pre-dawn hours, you saw a little band of moisture that may come on through. That's why we have a slight threat of a sprinkle after midnight and say before 9 a.m. on Saturday. Other than that, things are looking pretty good, not only through the rest of the weekend, but into early next week. So specifically for our Friday, clouds moving in with showers, especially west of the Cascades and maybe moderate in intensity. Again, that's not coming our way till overnight into Saturday morning. In the northwest and back into our neck of the woods, not too bad of a last day of the work week. In fact, zooming on in, you can see we are looking for temperatures approaching 60 in some areas. So a good 15 degrees or so above where we should be, at least 10 to 12 degrees above normal. So no complaints. And as we slide through the seven days, you can see after maybe a morning sprinkle on Saturday, the weekend's looking pretty good. Guys, get the candy, get the reservations for some nice dinners. You still got time till Saturday afternoon and evening. <laughs> then we have a holiday weekend with the President's Day looking pretty good as well. A little cooler as we slide into Tuesday, Wednesday, but all in all, looking pretty good. Well, keep it here on iFiber Channel 1 News Weather. Sports is coming up next. What's the best way to celebrate Valentine's weekend? It's the Sweetheart Event, going on now at your nearest Toyota dealer. It's your chance to choose from nine different Toyota models with an additional $1,000 in Sweetheart bonus savings on top of current incentives. 
Toyota's Sweetheart event. It's four days only, so don't miss this chance for amazing savings, even if it's for you. For full details, visit any of your Inland Empire Toyota dealers today. Toyota, let's go places. Sandoval recorded a double-double of 22 points and 11 rebounds, and Moses Lake escaped with a 61-58 win at Eastmont. Tyson Karstetter added 15 points and 7 boards. Mitch Holman hit 4 of 9 shots to finish with 12. The slim victory was the third in a row for the Chiefs and their 12th in the last 13 games. The win also nailed down second place in the Big Nine standings and the number two seed to the district tournament. Moses Lake jumped up top 23-15 after the first eight minutes of action. The Chiefs took a 34-28 score into the locker room at the half. A 16-13 run by the Wildcats closed the gap to 47-44 heading into the fourth quarter. The teams hit for 14 points each over the final eight minutes and it was Moses Lake holding on for the three-point win. The Chiefs head to West Valley Friday to wrap up regular season play. Win or lose, Moses Lake will host a first-round district loser-out game against Wenatchee February the 20th. The winner will advance to the championship game and secure a berth to state. Five players scored in double figures, and the Chiefs skinned the Wildcats 77-44. The lopsided win was the fourth in a row for Moses Lake and the sixth in the past seven games. Jesse Loetta led the Chiefs' attack with 20 points. The win lands Moses Lake in a tie for second with Sunnyside at 9-2 with one game left to play. Wenatchee is currently in first at 10-1. The Chiefs head to 5-6 West Valley Friday night to finish out the regular season. Sunnyside hosts Wenatchee. A win by the Grizzlies and the Chiefs would create a three-way tie atop the conference. Should that happen, Moses Lake owns the head-to-head -head tiebreaker over both teams. The Chiefs then would finish as Big Nine champs, secure the number one seed to district, and host the tournament on the 19th. Warden dropped a 46-44 first round district game to Lake Roosevelt. The Cougars were hitting on all cylinders early, but went flat after players got in foul trouble. Warden held a 26-24 lead at the break. The Cougars trailed by 10 going into the fourth quarter as the team had trouble handling the Raiders' press. Warden managed to get within three points with a minute to go, but fell short in its comeback bid. The loss sent the Cougars to the consolation bracket. Warden takes on Tenasket, who has dealt an 82-38 loss to Brewster in a loser-out game Saturday at Eastmont Junior High School. With spring training less than a month away, the Mariners are still making moves. The M's have signed second baseman Ricky Weeks to a one-year contract, paying him $2 million. It's a low-risk, high-reward deal for the Mariners. Weeks has shown that when he's healthy, can put up impressive offensive numbers. Weeks played his entire 10-year career in Milwaukee. 2010 was his best season offensively when he batted 269, hit 29 home runs, and had 32 doubles. With all-star Robinson Cano locked up at second base, expect Weeks to be a bench player for the M's. Weeks should split some time at first base and can also play some outfield if called upon. Weeks was a second overall pick in the 2000 MLB draft. Ricky was an all-star for the Brewers in 2011. We'll, we'll be right back after this commercial break. Hello, my name is Cheryl Kono. I am your local Efreda Farmers Insurance Agent. Here at Cheryl Kono Insurance Agency, our customers always come first. We don't just work here, we live here. Please stop by the office, call, email, or Facebook me for a free auto, home, life, business, or farm and ranch quote today. We are insurance, we are farmers. Come in for a free quote today. We 
are farmers. Bum, ba -dum, bum, 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 bum. Well, one thing I knew from being a patient myself was that a dental office is a scary place to come to. And so we wanted everything possible to make sure that our office is a comfortable place for our patients to visit. The patients that I have, my clients, have made me a part of this community and we want to give back in every way possible. Our spotlight story tonight is about the challenging job of Grant County Coroner Craig Morrison and how he manages to see a positive side to his work. Reporter Jeff Chu has the story. Few jobs are more challenging than that of a coroner. Grant County's elected coroner Craig Morrison can attest to that. There's the responsibility of notifying next of kin that they have lost a loved one, possibly a child, to suspicious circumstances such as foul play. Then there's the reality that death never waits for the right time to happen. So the on-call coroner must accept dismal, bloody crime scenes at odd hours of the day or night. You ask about a typical day at the office, and honestly that's what I like about my job, is that there is no typical day at the office. Uh, when we come into the office, we don't know what's going to happen. But Morrison, who has been in what he calls the death care industry most of his life, working at and directing funeral homes, manages to see the upside of the job. He says after four years on the job, he's almost accustomed to it. Yeah, I would say normal is whatever you get used to. So, yeah, being used to it a little bit to, to some degree. As coroner, Morrison investigates any death that falls under his jurisdiction. The deaths he and his two investigators examine include those that are sudden, unexpected, violent, or suspicious. Our job is to investigate deaths to, to determine the cause and manner of death. Morrison says the process involves gathering information, examining the scene of the death, interviewing relatives, friends, health care professionals, law enforcement personnel, witnesses, and others. His job is to examine a deceased person's body externally and internally, including microscopic and toxicological examination. Forensic pathologist Eric Keisel is called in from Tacoma for autopsies that Morrison and his staff assist. In 2014, the Grant County Coroner's Office examined 408 deaths in the county. Morrison says that's down from 2013, but it was the first year it has decreased and continues to rise with population growth. Of the 408 last year, I think 35 or 40 received autopsies. Uh, the year before was a little higher. Morrison accepts the fact that his job is morbid, but he sees a positive end to those affected by a loved one's violent or mysterious death. We're, we're dealing with the, the dead human body. And um, I suppose the thing that we do mostly is, is respect that. And we want to know why that person died. And is it a place that uh, the findings that we have, will it help the family that's left behind? Most of the time it does. While the coroner's offices are located on West Ivy Avenue in Moses Lake, Morrison and his staff spend much of their time at their autopsy room deep inside Samaritan Healthcare Hospital off East Wheeler Road. The autopsy room is next door to a morgue, a refrigerated room where bodies are stored for scheduled examinations. The autopsy room includes an examination table, a floor scale to weigh the body, and a hanging scale to weigh body parts. Morrison explained what determines the need for an autopsy. Well, there are certain protocols that we go through on a homicide type situation. We work directly with law enforcement. It's not our job to catch the bad guy, but the findings that we have need to uphold their story. You know, what happened when we get into autopsy here and we're following uh, bullet traces and things along those lines, does that collaborate with their story? Do they need to go, well, maybe that didn't happen this way if the body's telling us that it happened a different way? Morrison says the worst part of his job involves examining child deaths. More often than not, we're doing autopsies on children to, um, to get rid of the stigma that goes around that. You know, parents are beating the kid or maybe they're not being taken care of how they should have been. And uh, like I say, more often than not, it releases that from them. The coroner's office has two vehicles to respond to crime scenes. 
They are equipped with computers, examination equipment and materials, body bags and gurneys to move the bodies. Morrison was joined by one of his two investigators, Casey Sherwood, who has a similar background to his boss in funeral services. Sherwood echoed Morrison on why he likes the job. Getting to interact with families and, and helping them answer questions that they may not know um, it is very rewarding. I'm Jeff Chu for iFiber One News. And we'll be right back after this. Have you been to iFiber1.com? The most up-to-date news in the Columbia Basin is just one click away. With news, sports, and weather, you can stay in the know with what's going on in your community. Read your news on the go by visiting iFiber1.com on your tablet or even your phone. Follow us on Facebook for quick updates and discuss the news with others in our area. Your number one news source in the Columbia Basin is iFiber1.com. Check it out today. Attention business owners, the deadline is fast approaching to advertise in the 2015 edition of the Moses Lake local book. Don't be the only business left out. In print or online, it's the best way to reach your customer when they're ready to buy. Call today to place your ad by calling 877-738-9829 or by visiting us online at www.statewideyp.com. The Moses Lake local book telephone directory, simply the best advertising. Welcome back. A Moses Lake man allegedly tried to rape an ex-girlfriend after spending the night drinking with her. Prosecutors charged Crescencio Gutierrez Razo, a 38-year-old Moses Lake man in Grant County Superior Court with attempted rape, unlawful imprisonment, and making a false or misleading statement to a public servant. Razo was reportedly drinking with the victim and she gave him a ride to his home. The two reportedly dated in the past. She decided to stay at the residence because she was tired. The two people were reportedly talking when Razo tried to rape the victim. She reportedly tried to escape out a window and Razo forced her back inside the residence. A witness allegedly saw the victim try to escape and called 911. Razo reportedly told officers the woman freaked out and began hitting him while they were talking in the living room. He denied assaulting the victim. In Northwest news, children aren't supposed to write a will, but a young Portland girl left half of her life savings to the Children's Cancer Association when she died. Reporter Amy Troy has her story. Ella Westervelt was always a planner. The little girl with a big smile had big plans to help kids. Before she died, she wrote a will, giving half of her life savings to the Children's Cancer Association. We fulfilled that wish for her. She says CCA helped Ella for two and a half years as she battled lymphoma. In return, Ella left CCA half of her estate, precisely $296.55. It speaks to the idea uh, of what CCA did for us, and she certainly knew it. Um, her relationship with her chemo pal was, was one of her most important things um, through the, the whole course of her, her illness. Kim was Ella's chemo pal. She spent countless hours with Ella during chemotherapy, during her bone marrow transplant, drawing, reading, or raising her spirits with surprises like this homemade bouquet. But as we would go from one hospital to the next hospital to the to hospice care, Kim was always with us. She was amazing. CCA's goal is to bring joy as children fight cancer. It helped Ella's family in many ways, including sending them on a getaway so Ella could go kayaking, one of her passions. Her parents tell me when your child is diagnosed with cancer, people want to help, but they don't know how. And one of the great things about CCA is that they're there as sort of um, the transition between people wanting to do something to help and people needing the help. So donating money to CCA, making a donation to CCA is a way of, of giving them the opportunity to do those things. Ella died nearly two years ago. Her parents ask, in her honor, please match Ella's gift of $296.55.
I want to thank viewers, thank listeners, thank you who make the stories of children who have lived with pediatric cancer um, known and that the great work of CCA is shared. And that's going to do it for us here at i Fiber one News. We want to thank you for watching. We'll see you again tomorrow.